on this episode of The Game Quest. Scott doesn't want to tell me that they're not worth that in front of the seller. In yeah, my country, that's amazing because one of these is worth $100. Wood spends a few weeks sweating in Florida, hanging out with wagon wheel weirdos. We're game hunting. They got some games already. And hunting for retro video games. You keep taking all the best ones. Ooh. You guys can hear the in sync hit clips. He goes to the grossest video game store imaginable. This is where one of the most bullshit things that has ever happened to me and get screamed at. No, they can't buy them because they've already been sold. Uh, started yelling at Wood to put stuff back. That's just not cricket, Mike. Because yeah. he's trying to resell and do stupid <laughs> us for about three weeks on uh, his trip down to Florida and we actually just got back from Dragon Con. Wood wants to do as much game hunting as possible while he's down here going to flea markets, pawn shops, game stores. Of course to the Wagon Wheel Flea Market where we go each weekend, look for games, set up, sell and trade games. So hopefully uh, it's a decent weekend out there and the weather's okay. So I love coming to the Wagon Wheel Flea Market for a lot of reasons, not just the people and the characters and the adventure that you go on whether you like it or not, but for the games. There actually is a lot of vendors here, a lot of people that set up week to week, but then also people that just come in on a one-off whim and you might find a hidden gem. You might find the rare Super Nintendo game you've been looking for. Right away, we're gonna head out to the Mustang and see what kind of games we can find. Now, I'm not really finding anything inside. We're looking around and it's all the same stuff that people bring week to week. It's stuff I haven't seen before, but I can tell that it's being picked through. These guys, they won't leave these, these vendors, they won't leave these booths, so I decide to go off on my own. Which, when you've only been in the country for a few weeks and you really don't know your way around, you don't know what games to look for, you don't know what prices, you don't know what things are worth, it's not the best idea, but I figure, what's the worst that can happen? And the first thing of value that I find out here is Final Fantasy VIII, Final Fantasy IX, and Tetris, and another game on the PS1. Final Fantasy IX happens to be one of my favorite RPGs of all time, and is my favorite Final Fantasy. Now the labels in Australia for these games, they're very simplistic, and I gotta say I prefer them. But the cases here, they're variants. You have all the characters on the front, which to me, looks really badass because it's new and it's different and it's my favorite game in a different form. So I want to pick this up. Now Wood was a bit in front of us and he has some games in his hand and I walk up to him and he asks, yeah, are these a good deal for $40? Would you buy them, Scott? What? Would you buy them for $40? I have seven copies of Final Fantasy That doesn't have a manual. What? It doesn't have a manual either. And I'm looking at him like, yeah, that's a fairly decent price. I'm thinking that he's asking in the sense of, hey, I want to buy these and keep them for myself. Scott doesn't want to tell me that they're not worth that in front of the seller. No, no, man. I don't like interrupting. Like, I know, I just, he knows I'm, I'm, from, games, a, I know he's I'm from Australia, so I don't know prices of anything here. That's why I'm asking. See, in my country, that's amazing because one of these is worth $100. Yeah, so. yeah. I'm getting the feeling these games aren't worth it, but at this point, I feel like my hands are tied and I'm always that guy that picks games up, asks the price, and puts them straight down. These are a good price for me. If I was in Australia, I'd be paying a lot more for these. So you know what, screw it. Let's just buy them and I'll regret it later. And honestly, I did. I regretted it later. That wasn't the price I wanted to pay, but it happened. Yeah, I think later on, trading the games or selling them or something and it got his money back on them. But, uh, so yeah, we kind of uh, screwed that situation up a bit. Can we have a look in this shop down here? Uh, but what happens to spot at a guy's booth a couple of bins that look like they might have some games and systems in them. Now this is the kind of thing you want to ask about because whether they're a reseller or not, whether their prices on the table are horrendous, the stuff down there isn't priced. So you're going to ask them what the price is and they're going to have to tell you on the spot and there is a good chance you can catch them slipping. Which yeah, PlayStation is that the one that's back with some terrible? The only thing that did catch my attention was a 
fat PS3, the original model. Uh, at first I was hoping, oh, maybe it was a uh, 60 gig, which is still fairly desirable. It has the backwards compa compatibility with the PS2 games. It was not a 60 gig. Uh, if you don't know, you can tell by the fact that it has four USB ports on the front, and also there's a little panel that you can pop open on the front, and there's like some extra ports and things in there. It wasn't a 60 gig, so we passed on all of that. As the rain started to pour in, we all moved into the inside, and we looked through some more games, some more vendors, some more booths. However, it is all really expensive, so Jeremy, Katie, and I take a break to grab some breakfast while Scott goes and decides whether it's even worth setting up today or if we're gonna bail early thanks to the weather. Katie, go find a spot for us to sit. Huh? Go find a spot for us to sit. Your hair looks glorious right now. There we go. We decide to go to uh, Josh's game store, um, which actually, at the time of this filming, it no longer exists. We get there, and it's closed. It's supposed to have been open by this time. We're knocking on the door, banging on the door. Josh isn't there. We don't know where he is. We try calling him and calling him. I end up calling Aaron back at the flea market and say, hey, where's your brother? Why isn't his store not open? He goes, wait, what do you mean? Are you there? I'm like, yeah, we're standing in front of his store. He goes, oh, well, Josh just arrived at the flea market. We're sort of uh, low on spirits and the weather is really, really bad, and it's actually, I think, still too early at that point to really go to, like, pawn shops. They weren't gonna be open. Uh, so we ended up heading back home that day. So it's a new dawn, it's a new day, and we're going back to the Wagamore Flea Market a week later. The sun is out, it's warm because it's Florida, and we're gonna see if we have any better luck looking for video games this week. So in the morning, I was really grumpy, I wanted a shower, and ended up being late. So Katie had to stay behind and wait for me, and then we drove separately from Scott and Jeremy. The car Katie and I took had all the video games in it that Scott wanted to set up. And we're driving down the road, and uh, I'm in front, and Katie's behind me, and all of a sudden I notice that Katie is not behind me anymore. Okay, go ahead. Can I get a ham, egg, and cheese wake-up wrap? Sure, what else can I get for you? A large latte with two sugars. Do you want that hot or ice? Hot. Hot. Well, they decided to stop off at Dunkin' Donuts because Wood was having a grumpy Wood morning and needed some coffee, and I'm sure Katie got a donut or something. He was like, where are my games, basically, was, was his reaction. You had them in Where your are car. the games? You didn't care about us if we got an accent or something now. I was a little grumpy that morning, just a little bit. In fact, I remember the tone in his voice was something like, I've already found games, so when you guys want to get here... We're game hunting, and I got some games already. <laughs> I think I ended up finding a Shinmu on the Xbox for pretty cheap, uh, five bucks, seven bucks. That was actually my bad, and I felt pr I felt pretty bad about it. But uh, if I if Wood doesn't get coffee, he doesn't rise. I'm waiting for a second because uh, I believe she has some DS games in her car. Very good person that I buy stuff from. It was very nice. Star Fox Command, Mario Kart, and uh, hold on, cheat sheet. Uh, Animal Crossing, that's what it is. These are Wood's notes for me. Four pages. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Let's pay big for the three I want. Would you take all the best ones? Of course. Yeah, you would. Uh, so I got Star Fox Command, Animal Crossing on the DS, and Mario Kart DS. I had told her that I would pay like $10 a piece for those, and she said five. So, <laughs> pow, boom, all right. And I bought the koala because he had a really grumpy face. And he reminded me of a koala I used to take care of that was really grumpy all the time. And he bought it for me actually because I knew that Scott wasn't going to. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would have bought it. <laughs> Mario, Donkey Kong, and 100 for the lot. It's a nice shape at least. Back. Name is Marco. We're out here for years now selling toys. Uh, this is the place to come and get them if you want them. Flea Market here, Wagon Wheel, Pinellas Park, Florida. Number 306.
I got you slippery, Scott. I can't play ground. Just got Scott it's, slippery. It's yeah. just playground one, it's not playground seven. We get back to the booth and then I start setting everything up. Everyone disappeared and they were gone for most of the day. Today Scott is setting up his games and he's going to be trying to sell stuff at the market, which means he's going to be really busy with that. So I asked Jeremy if he wants to do a walk around the market and try and buy some games with me and he says yes. I have no clue what to say because I f***ing hate doing these interview things, they're stupid. Lay bow. Favorite movie, Jabroni? Well, of course, I'm being sarcastic because he's an absolute piece of ass. Although, it's not as worse as the new Fantastic Four. This is by oh far the oh best condition the dog ever. On version. This, this, is in pr this is in pristine condition, guys. You buying that, Jabroni? Oh, yeah. So I got dirty money. Get it with my glasses on. Nerdy money. So I'm not sure what other footage Wood has right now. Um, I'm assuming it's him like wandering around looking at things. Maybe they found good shit and they didn't tell me. I was at the booth the whole day. Packing up. Yeah. How was the day? It was a normal affair. Yeah. It wasn't wasn't the best, wasn't the worst of times. Katie's out of here. She's done. She said I am gonna go get a better man. <laughs> you. I'm the video game wizard and you're watching the game quest. <laughs> Hello, Game Wizard 2. No, sorry, we're closed. Yeah, for good. Okay. Today, Josh's store is actually open. Now, Josh's store is... <laughs> it was almost a heaven sent that it was closed the first time. We just had to press our luck and try and go in again. To describe Josh's store is kind of tricky. Um, first of all, it no longer exists. Uh, the store is closed. It's been closed for a while now. The store smells like dead cat the floor is sticky, it's moldy. There's a car seat back there. This is, so this is um, Video Game Wizard's dumpster. So do you want to go dumpster diving? Josh found a PS2 in the dumpster with like 10 games. Let's go dumpster diving. I found Pinball, Game & Watch. Yep. It's free, free because I'm dumpster diving. They treated it more like a hangout spot, it's more like a clubhouse, less like a store. The store is not kept well at all. They like cooked food in it, sometimes it smelled a little weird. Found WarioWare Do It Yourself, Brain Age 2, and Glory Days 2. And they're sold, they're in the pot of- <laughs> How are they sold? They're in a, underneath a Pepsi box. It didn't do well, hence why it is now closed. I'm here with Aaron Kosharski, owner and CEO of three ga video game wizard stores now. Yeah, oh, three. Yeah. The third location is going to open. It's going to be an arcade center. Oh. Every year on the anniversary of the, the day we open, we open another store. No matter no, how no, bad no. the other stores are going, no, no matter how many times no. your electricity cuts off, you're no. just going to, every, every year, you're going to get a new store. Just keep it going. Sweet. My oh, power's out again! <laughs> What? Did the power really dash? Oh, did he put the switch? <laughs> that would have been perfect. <laughs> this is Luigi. For some reason, gaming cookies. For a reason. Yeah. Josh always finds the weirdest gaming related stuff. The cup. Yeah, there's another one. Back to the Future Blu ray. 25th anniversary, all three movies. My favorite movies of all time, as a lot of you may know already. How much is it? That was the first picture. You can't remember that. Really games really good. And then you got this lot a while ago. So I said, you're doing five, and you said yes. So I'm not gonna say no to that at all. PC Titanfall. That's worth the whole zero dollars. It's a wild star. Well, I'll give you a whole zero dollars. Wood happens to be digging in this one box, and uh, he sees some toys that he's kind of interested in. Spaceship? It looks like it's just some random... <laughs> oh, that's and, brand and look at that viewfinder fighter. thing from way back in the day, brand new. Look at oh, the I don't know if I'd play brand Here's something else from my past, something that I loved and spent so many hours with as a kid, a viewfinder. Now viewfinders, for those of you who don't know, were these little uh, glasses, reflective glass, that you would slot a little uh, movie wheel or like picture wheel into and then you would just click it and it would rotate to the next picture and it would blow up almost like the new VR units that are coming out 
it would blow up this picture and you would see it sometimes in 3D or sometimes it would just be a flat still from a Disney movie or a cartoon or something like that. Back in the day when you never really had that immersion of putting your eyes up to something and seeing an image that clearly right in front of you taking up your entire build of vision and you would buy extra little discs to put in your viewfinder. I've never seen a viewfinder like this in packaging, almost original, almost new as it were. Microphone. The guy, so much. Mine's this thing. Oh. Yeah, see if you guys can hear the in-sync hit clips. Here's an interesting blast from the past. I don't know who else remembers these little hits clips. Little mini CD uh, Walkman type deals that have a couple of headphones clip, uh, attached to them that you can plug in. And they play just one, like 20 seconds of a, of a hit from the 90s. Before iPods and stuff like that, they had MP3 players where you could just load your songs onto and then play and they probably had like a gigabyte of, of memory. But before that, there was Walkmans. Now around this time of Walkmans where you just play a CD, this little gimmick of hits came out where it was a miniature Walkman that you didn't need a CD for. But they could only fit like 20 seconds of a song and yet kids loved them. I, I loved them. I thought it was the bad, most badass thing. I didn't understand how the music was getting from this to this. Blew my mind at the time. It's the funniest thing and it's obviously really now, so no one's gonna go home with this. Songs available now. More this fall, you can collect them all. Hit clips, each sold separately. Doesn't matter, they were sold. Put them in the truck, Bob, please. They're buying them. No, they can't buy them because they've already been sold. No, they haven't been sold. Well, haven't now it's broken. broken. Well, now it's broken, so. Other person, the person that sells the game, or the toys and stuff like that, that person's, I think, girlfriend uh, started yelling at Wood to put stuff back. No, they can't buy them because they've already been sold. Not being very nice at all about it. This is where one of the most bull things that has ever happened to me, I start to get yelled at by someone else in the store, someone irrelevant to the store, telling me I cannot buy the stuff that I have. Bob, how much you want me to give them now? Because he's trying to resell and do stupid shit now. There's only two, there was only two items in there. The Wolverine, which Bob didn't have that in his stack, and then the other one, neither one of those was in his stack. Now I have to say, there was nothing that happened before the camera turned on to try and catch some of her yelling that I did or any of us did to piss her off. It wasn't like we said, no, we're buying this. We literally walked up to the counter with stuff and she started yelling at us because we weren't able to buy it. And not only that, she grabbed my Wolverine, threw it back in the box, but she grabbed my viewfinder, threw my viewfinder back into the box and you could hear it crash. What, what would he have paid I on the Wolverine that he mastered? I don't know if were you even actually- I was, but I don't buy them now. <laughs> I'm used to the people yelling at each other there and sort of the unorganization. Um, but Wood was a little taken back. He was like, what the hell is going on? Cameron needs to go away line here. And I just wanted to leave right away. Scott asked, do you want to stay? Do you want to try and buy this stuff? I'm like, no, I just want to go. I don't want anything to do with this stuff anymore. Doesn't matter, they were sold. Put them in the truck, Bob, please. They're buying them. No, they can't buy them because they've already been sold. No, they haven't been sold. They haven't now it's broken. <laughs> Well, now it's broken, so. After the uh, really negative experience at Josh's store, I want to take Wood to a nice game shop where he won't get yelled at. Uh, so we take him to Eminem Games. Um, I deal with these guys very often. Uh, they're really nice. And um, we're wandering around. Uh, Wood's looking at some stuff over here. Katie's playing some arcade games over here. So apart from being yelled out of this store, everything that's happened in the last few days and the last couple of weeks has been really fun. I always enjoy hanging out with Scott and Katie. I love hanging out with Jeremy. I love being in Florida in general. It's only the weather and this one particular person this time, that sucks. We're gonna head back home, get some sleep. Uh, we need to rest up because we have our big three-day drive to Texas for Retropalooza. Hey guys, we're all here to purchase, make the biggest YouTube retro video game deal that, I mean, I've ever seen. So we're gonna buy all the stuff on this table, hopefully, as well as everything in that cabinet. Don't complain about the lighting in this video. Yes, I know it got darker towards the end because the sun was going down and I'm dealing with birds chirping, 
people doing yard work, dogs barking. I apologize, but you better not complain. Don't. Would you get no more clips, because I don't like doing these, so... Goodbye?